I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to Tech Talk. This edition, we're going to be continuing working on the track we created last time, where a series of effects we used to turn a drum break into a crazy bass line. This time, we're going to play with that bass line by chopping it up and transposing it so that we can create some more interesting parts for our track. Let's go back to the session then. First thing we're going to do is mess around with some envelope parameters. Clip volume is a good one for this bass line, as, at the moment, apart from the level being ducked a little by the compressor, the bass line is sounding the whole time. By using the envelope here, we can lower the level at various points as the clip plays. Now we can modulate some other parameters. How about the frequency dial on our second frequency shifter? Remember I played with this at the end of the last edition? Well, the envelopes allow you to create some really complex curves for that parameter that repeat as the clip loops. How about we take another drum loop now? I'll stick with the same sample pack. So let's take another one of KJ Sorka's Wicked Live Drum Breaks. And stick that on a new track. What we're going to do now is process this beat by all the same effects we've used on that previous track. And to make it even more manageable, we're going to stick it all in a rack, so that we can save it as a preset to use another time. So let's drag an empty audio effects rack onto our new track, and then drag all the effects from the first track into that. Now when we play this second track, you can hear the drum beat is changed into a distorted bass line, just as the previous track had been. What we can do with this one though, is to transpose it to a different pitch from the first. And the way we can do this is by setting a different delay size. If we lower this one by 3 milliseconds, you can hear how the pitch goes up by a minor third. So now when we switch between tracks, it adds some nice variation in the bass line. Of course we can use clip envelopes to adjust the track volume of each clip, so that one track is set to full volume, when the other is set to minimum. This will switch between bass lines automatically for me, so I don't have to do it manually myself. How about if we want to create a series of pitches now, so that we can play our bass line? Well the best way to do this is to use different clips on a single track, rather than switching between different tracks. What we're going to do is take our rack, and repeat it multiple times on different chains in a new rack, where each chain has a different delay time to create a particular pitch. This is done by copying our rack onto a new track and then copying the chain onto two chains below. Then the delay on each rack is adjusted, so each one plays at a particular pitch. I've worked these out earlier by the way, I don't just happen to know the amount of milliseconds that relate to each semitone. Now if I take the original drum break we used, and run it through the rack, you'll hear when I solo each chain that a different pitch is produced. <laughs> If 
we want to now play these pitches using a MIDI keyboard or even the computer keyboard, then we need to create some clips that activate each chain. There are a few different ways we can do this, but the best way is to use clip envelopes to control the levels of the chains. So, first we need to map the levels of the chains to macros in the rack. Then set the maximum levels in the browser to 0 dB. Now, we set the macros to max, then create three identical clips on our track, and set their envelopes so that only one of the macros is set to max, and the other two are set to the bottom, making sure it's a different macro each time. Then, when we play each clip, you can only hear one of the chains at a time. If you want to make this really controllable, then you can set each clip to legato with no quantization, and then map each one to a keyboard key. Then, you can switch between them freely at any point to make whatever baseline progressions you want. I hope that's shown you how using effects racks, together with clip envelopes, can totally transform the sound of your audio to create unique and interesting samples of your own. See you next time.